हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टी वाई बी एस सी क्लास आई एम मिसेस वैशाली टुडे गोइंग टू टीच यू थ्योरी पेपर फोर दैट इज इम्यूनोलॉजी टॉपिक वन इम्यूनिटी डेफिनेशन एंड क्लासिफिकेशन एट द एंड ऑफ दिस लेक्चर द स्टूडेंट शुड बी एबल टू डिफाइन इम्यूनिटी एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल अडेप्टिव इम्यूनिटी the types of adaptive immunity active and passive immunity active immunity which operates in two different ways humoral and cell mediated and passive immunity which may be either naturally acquired or it may be artificially acquired so we will start with the definition of immunity immunity can be defined as all those physiological mechanisms that end of the animal with the capacity to recognize materials as foreign to itself and to neutralize eliminate or metabolize them with or without injury to its own tissue in other words immunity can be defined as the resistance exhibited by the host towards infection that is caused by microorganisms and their products like the toxins there are two types of immunity innate immunity and acquired immunity in the previous lecture we have studied in detail about the innate immunity which is also called as inborn immunity or native immunity so today we will restrict ourselves to acquired immunity this acquired immunity is the immunity that is acquired by the person during the life there are four different characteristics of adaptive immunity which reflect the presence of the functional immune system and these characteristics include the antigenic specificity that is the immune response that is generated is specific for the antigen that stimulates or activates the immune system the second characteristics is recognition between the self and the non self that is the immune system is able to discriminate between the self antigens and the non self antigens and because it has an ability to discriminate between the self and the non self it can mount an immune response only against the non self antigens without causing any damage to the self antigens the third characteristics is the immunological memory that is memory cells are produced in the adaptive immune response while no memory is generated in the native or innate immune response the four major characteristics is diversity for every different type of antigen that enters into the body the body has an ability to produce antibodies which are specific for that specific antigen there are thousands of antigens naturally occurring in the nature antibodies against all these antigens can be produced in a single individual acquired immunity is mainly divided into two types active immunity and passive immunity both active and passive immunity may be either natural or may be artificial we will see each type of immunity in detail we'll start with active immunity active immunity is usually the resistance developed due to antigenic stimulus that is when an antigen enters into the body this antigen has an ability to activate the immune system and once the immune system is activated the immune response is generated and therefore the immune response that is generated is specific for that specific antigen without antigenic stimulus active immunity cannot be developed the immune system of the person is involved in the active immune response 
that is when the antigen enters it activates the T or the B cells and these activated T and the B cells are the cells that lead to the formation of either antibodies or sensitized cells which help in the elimination of the antigen. That is active involvement of the immune system is there in case of active immunity. A latent period is seen that is when the antigen enters into the body immediately antibodies will not be produced or sensitized cells will not be generated. Some time is required for the appearance of the antibodies or the appearance of sensitized cells in the system. This period is the period that is required for the activation of the immune system and this period is referred to as the latent period. When it is actually acquired active immunity, there is always a latent period when the antigen enters into the body for the first time. Initially, when the antigen enters, the immunity may decrease. This is because if there are any preformed antibodies that are present in the circulation, the antigen will bind with these preformed antibodies and thus decrease the immunity of the person initially. But later it increases the immunity. Once the immune response is developed, the immune response is a long lasting immune response. The first antigenic stimulus that is given to the body is referred to as the primary response and in this primary response memory cells are generated. These memory cells are the ones that get activated in the later stimulus that is given to the body. And therefore once the active immunity is developed it is a long lasting immunity. Active immunity can be of two types naturally acquired active immunity or it may be artificially acquired active immunity. Naturally acquired active immunity is the immunity that is developed because of the natural entry of the antigen in the body. That is naturally when the pathogenic microorganism or its product come in contact with the body it is called as the naturally acquired active immunity. This can be because of either the clinical infection that occurs in the body that whose symptoms can be seen or it may be a subclinical infection of because of the entry of the antigen where there is no symptoms or no clinical symptoms that are visible. Artificial immunity is generated by introduction of vaccines in the body. That is the antigen is purposely injected into the body by the process of vaccination. The vaccines that are used are of two types. Killed vaccines in which the microorganism is killed when it is in the most virulent phases. It may be killed either by heat or it may be killed by chemicals. Okay. So you can use killed vaccines and when you are using the killed vaccines for immunization, repeated doses of the vaccine are required. Killed vaccines do not initiate infection and there, and there is no multiplication of the microorganisms. But due to this the level of immunity that is induced is very less and thus it requires booster doses. Examples of killed vaccines are the typhoid vaccines also abbreviated as the TAB vaccine, the cholera vaccine, the plague vaccine, the pertussis vaccine. The SALK polio vaccine that is the heat killed polio virus vaccine. The second type of vaccines are the attenuated vaccine which are also referred to as the live vaccines in which the microorganisms are living but these are the organisms whose virulence has been reduced. 
These preparations usually contain live microorganisms and can generate the immune response that is much more effective as compared to the killed vaccines. Attenuated vaccines like for example the BCG vaccine which is used for tuberculosis, the Sabine polio vaccine is the vaccine which contains the live attenuated polio virus, the MMR that is the measles, mumps and the rubella vaccine, smallpox vaccine and chickenpox vaccine are a few of the attenuated vaccines that are available recently in the market. In addition to these two types of vaccine, another type of vaccine that is commonly used are the subunit vaccines in which instead of using the whole microorganism as a vaccine, the pathogenic part or the antigenic part of the bacteria is used as the vaccine. Active immunity usually operates in two different ways. One is the humoral way and the second is the cell mediated way. The humoral type of immunity is usually mediated by antibodies where the entry of the antigen into the body stimulates or activates the B cells. The activated B cells further proliferate and differentiate into the plasma cells and plasma cells produce antibodies which are specific for the antigen that has activated the immune response. Cell mediated immune response is the immune response that is mediated by sensitized cells. These type of cells are usually generated against in intracellular pathogens like for example the viruses or the tumor cells which sensitize the WBCs or the TC cells or the natural killer cells which get activated in response to the antigen and help in killing the antigen. The second type of adaptive immunity is the passive immunity. This type of immunity is the immunity that is acquired by injecting antibodies or the sensitized WBCs where there is no involvement of the immune system of that particular individual. It differs from the active immunity in various different ways in which the first difference is no antigenic stimulus is required. In the passive type of immunity, no antigen contact is required because the immune system is not involved. Your preformed antibodies are injected into the body of the person and, and therefore no involvement of the immune system. There is no latent period that is seen in the passive immunity. This is because preformed antibodies that are injected do not require any activation. They are already produced against a specific antigen and therefore when the antigen is present, these antibodies can directly go and bind to the antigen and help in the elimination of the antigen from the body. The protection that is conferred in passive immunity is for a short time. This is because every type of antibody has a specific half-life. After the half-life of that antibody, the antibody is removed from the circulation by a process which is called as the turnover of proteins. So depending upon the life of that particular antibody, the protection that will be conferred will be for a short period of time where the minimum time for IgM antibodies is 5 days and that for IgG type of antibodies is 25 to 23 to 25 days right? and therefore the protection that will be conferred by the antibodies will be for a short time which may extend up to 23 days. There is no memory that is generated in this particular immunity. 
This is because there is no involvement of the immune system, no cells are generated or no cells are activated and therefore no memory cells are generated and therefore protection will be conferred only as long as the antibody is present in the circulation. The, when the antigen is inject, when the antibody is injected into the person, this antibody is from a foreign source. And when the antibody is from the foreign source, it will be treated as an antigen by the recipient. And because it will be treated like an antigen by the recipient, the recipient's immune system will mount an immune response against the antigen. And therefore, when repeated administration of the antibodies is done in, a, in the recipient, the recipient will mount an immune response thus decreasing the effectivity of the antibodies and therefore this particular type of immunity is less effective. But the, it is advantageous when immediate type of protection is required like for example if a person If a person meets with an accident and has a large amount of blood loss, the wounds are contaminated by the soil which contains Clostridium titani microorganisms which are responsible for tetanus. Under such circumstances, for the immune system of that particular per person to develop antibodies against the pathogen will take a long time as there is a large amount of blood loss that has occurred. With the blood, the cells of the immune system are also lost and therefore the immune system of that person is compromised. And because the immune system is compromised, the protection that can be available by the active enzyme or active immunity is very less. And therefore, under such circumstances, it will be advantageous to use passive immunization where immediate protection can be conferred on that particular person. So, passive immunity can be of two types, either natural passive immunity or artificial passive immunity. Natural type of passive immunity is usually transferred from the mother to the baby when the baby is in the womb via the placenta. IgG class of antibodies are the antibodies that can cross the placenta and therefore these IgG antibody of maternal origin cross the placenta, enter into the fetus and provide protection to the fetus in the early days after birth. After the birth, Antibodies are transferred from the mother to the child by a natural process of feeding the baby with the breast milk. The mother's milk contains large number of secretory IgA class of antibodies. These IgA class of antibodies help in protecting the newborn baby against pathogens in the intestine right? and because they pass naturally either via the placenta or the milk it is referred to as naturally acquired passive immunity. Passive immunity can be artificially acquired where purposeful injection of preformed antibodies will lead to artificially acquired passive immunity. This type of immunity lasts for a short duration like for example the diphtheria antitoxin which has a half life of 7 days. So this antitoxin can provide a protection only for about 7 days. It can be introduced into the person by injection of either hyperimmune sera which is a sera that is obtained from an immunized individual. 
Usually this hyperimmune sera is the sera that is obtained from animal origin. Usually horses are used for hyperimmune sera where antigen is injected into the horse's blood. The blood is harvested and antibodies that are produced in the blood are separated and this sera is used as the hyperimmune sera. But when this sera is used, again it has certain drawbacks that the antibody is from a foreign origin and therefore the recipient will mount an immune response against the anti antibodies and thus eliminate the, try to eliminate the antibodies from the body. But for a short time period, hyperimmune sera can provide protection to the recipient. Another mechan Another way in which artificially acquired passive immunity can be induced is by using pooled serum where instead of the serum from an animal origin, serum from human origin is used where the sera from a number of people is collected and this pooled serum is used as the preformed antibodies or anti serum and injected into the person this can provide protection for a small period of time but in emergencies it is always advantageous to use the pool serum the other form is the convalescent serum convalescent serum is the serum that is obtained from a person who has just recovered from an infection. Because the person has recovered from the infection, the titer of antibodies in that person's serum is high. And when the titer is high, the serum is harvested and this serum is used for prevention of infection in the patients. For example, the plasma therapy that is tried nowadays for COVID infections is an example of use of the convalescent serum. Hope you have understood the topic. These are a few references that I have used for this lecture. Thank you.